Hello guys, CryptoGrounds here. Welcome back to another C-Sharp Crash Course video. This is episode 5 and today we're going to be doing constructors. So last video we talked about all the variables that we can do and this is pretty important when we, when we create our constructors for our classes. Yeah, constructors. Okay, if you enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and turn on those notifications if you want to catch up on the latest content and live streams. Uh, comment all your feedback, uh, compliments, and suggestions, all that good stuff below. And if you want to support me, check out the Patreon link. It's in the description. And let's get on with it. So I'm going to delete all this. Okay, so we have our, our state namespace and our state class and our blueprints namespace with our district class as well. So we're going to set up uh, our district class because we want to make this into an object that we can use to define what a district is. Okay. So a constructor is, so what is a constructor? A constructor is basically a way to predefine or pre-initialize some variables or whatever our um, default variables in our class is when we initialize an object, such when we do new, uh, let's here, let's create this constructor first, okay? And I'll show you how it all works. So a constructor is simply just public district, okay? Now each, class has a um, has a hidden constructor inside it. That's why your variable start off as zero or your boolean says false. It's an invisible constructor, but we can change that by adding or by overriding the district constructor. Okay? So we do it by typing public district in our parentheses with the curly braces like that. Okay? So let's have a variable. So let's do a string. I'm gonna do public variable for now. But we're going to call this a district name, okay? So we have a variable here, but by default, it's just going to be an empty string until we change it in here. So let's put uh, a parameter. Um, let's do district name in here, okay? And in order to def um, have a default definition for what to this variable is, we do name is equal to district name, which is the parameter. Now, what I what I like to do is have the variables matching. Okay, so you do this by just having the same name, and except we add the this um, keyword to the beginning of the what we're setting equal to. And now, pe now people tend to forget where this this actually goes. People will think that name is equal to this dot name because this is like. It's talking about this, which completely makes sense. But we're talking about this one right here. So we're going to be setting it to here. And we're talking about this class's object. That's where this is coming from. And one way to remember is that whenever we're setting a variable, like for the outside, that goes on the left hand, right? So we're setting it to the right hand side, which is our parameter right here, okay? So like that. So now when we create our district object right here, we type in the new keyword and district and we add our parentheses in here. Now we can have an empty constructor in here, but it won't do any good. And actually it, will, it has a parameter in here. So if we just get rid of all of this right here, we can do this, right? It creates a new object and it has an empty constructor. So this is completely valid. However, we have a constructor with one parameter right here. So it'll give us an error. Constructor district has one parameters but is invoked with zero arguments. So we need to, so there's zero arguments in here. So we need to put in arguments that matches our parameter. Okay? Now I'll talk more about parameters and arguments in a future video. But basically all methods and constructors, all this good stuff, we're gonna need it. So we're gonna put in our custom string, which is gonna be I don't know, California I don't, I don't remember. I'm just going to put California school district or something like that. Okay. So now our argument for our parameter name is California school district. So when we, uh, when we initialize this, we have our district object right here and we created a district with the name California school district. Okay. Let's add another variable. And also this is gonna be able to tell us to, that we can make this field private. However, I'm not gonna do that right now. So we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a U short. Remember what a U short is. It's an unsigned short, basically an unsigned 16-bit um, integer, 
okay? So this is positive only. We're not going to have, so this variable is going to be students. Or actually, this could be, we can just do this a byte. And this would be schools, right? I mean, obviously we can have a million schools, but I don't know any district that has more than 255 schools. So we'll just do assigned bytes, which is that. We're not going to do, uh, no, we're going to do unsigned bytes, okay? So we want it to be positive only. So we're not going to do s bytes, we're going to be unsigned bytes. So that's just bytes, okay? And uh, this could just be called school count. And in here, I'm going to do byte schools, okay? Now, again, you could be consistent, you could be inconsistent, however you want, but I'm just showing you as an example, okay? So we're going to set the school count to the parameter schools. And now we're going to have another red line here because we need to add a bytes variable in here. So how many schools do we want in our district? Let's put 25, okay? So now we created a district that is called California School District, and it has 25 schools in it and not literally, but that's just according to our definition. Now, another thing we can do here is we can override these um, these constructors, okay? So you can create constructors with certain parameters, right? So let's copy and paste this. Now, this is the exact same thing, so we're gonna get a red error here. So let's say we don't know what how many school this is gonna have yet. We can simply get rid of this right here, and now we created a second constructor with only the name parameter okay we can get rid of this and let's say we want the school count to be zero in this one and honestly by default it will be zero so we can pretty much get rid of this but I'm just gonna keep it in here so you know how control how this is working out and let's create another so I'm gonna call this district 2 and I'm gonna do a new district and then now we only have the name so we're gonna call this um, Washington State school again. I don't even know if these are real districts. I'm just making these up. Washington State School District. Okay, just for just for example. So now we have created a district with the name Washington State School District, and we didn't put in an argument for schools because we didn't need to, and by default is zero. So our school count is zero. It's an empty district, right? So now we can use either one of these, right? And you can create as many of these as possible as long as the parameters or the type of parameters and how many they have are different. Okay, how many they have? Okay, you can literally just do like uh, int schools in here and this will, this will work too, right? It can be a different variable type, but it's just gotta be different from the other, right? So we're just gonna do it like that. Okay, so let's uh, run this. I want to show you guys how to do this. Now, the reason why I'm adding static to this is because we are creating, um, we're trying to reference a static variable in a static method, which is st public static void main. And I'll explain what this is in a future video, but this, this is where our code starts, right here. Public static void main. Now, this can't be non-static. It has to be static, which means in order to access our our variables here, our objects, they must be static. Okay, so let's create um, <clears throat> a variable right here. It's non-static, and again, I will get to static and non-static in the future. We're gonna just call this uh, a number, I guess. Okay, so if we try to access this number in the static method, it won't work. Okay. See, it says um, that we cannot access a non-static field number in static context, which is this. Now, if we add the static keyword, we are able to do that. And what's also cool is that if we create a non-static method, like for example, run, for example, or add, we can access a static variable inside a non-static reference, okay? And we can also do non-static in a non-static reference. We just, yeah, like that. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So this is completely valid, but we're not going to worry about that now. Okay, so make sure these are static. Okay, Unless, or otherwise we would be accessing in a non-static reference or a non-static uh, method. Okay, so now we're going to print what the school name is. Okay, so we can do district.name and um, we can add, and again, I'm going to show you string interpolation in the future, which means we can do cool stuff with our strings, and we're going to do our school count. So we can do district dot uh, school count, 
Okay, and then we're gonna add another string right here. And we're gonna call this students or schools. Okay. And we're gonna do the same thing for our second district. Okay, so California School District has 25 schools, which we have defined here. And Washington State School District has zero schools, which we defined here as well. So if you didn't know, adding variables is done like this, okay? So you have a string variable here, right? And you also add another string with a colon and a space in it. And then we add our variable here, which is um, a byte. Now, you can do 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 a uh, two string here but it's redundant because this is already being added by two strings so and a string plus a variable will just automatically cast it as a string okay so yeah also another thing is that we can make this we can simplify this in the future well, we're gonna do this in another video it's gonna be called the two string method okay so it's gonna be really cool and very helpful where we can literally just like do district dot two string and it'll print out whatever we want okay it can print out name school counts or whatever data that we have inside the class anyways if you enjoyed this video and you learned something new make sure you smash that like button subscribe to my channel if you're new and turn on those notifications so you get notified for future videos and live streams if you uh, want to support me make sure you check out the patreon it's the links in the description and if you want to comment all your suggestions feedback and compliments uh, make sure you do that i'll be sure to check those out anyways thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace